Hello, welcome to my YouTube. My name's Chris and this is the actual B-17 that landed at RF Bolthead March 20th, 1944 on a return mission from Frankfurt on a bombing run. Well, as you can guess it, we're on another adventure. We're um, on the far outskirts or perimeter of the uh, RAF, former RAF bulkhead. It's an October day in 2021 and we're just looking around at the location which was here of the two B-17s that came in to land. Well there were three altogether. Three B-17s came in, they were returning from a bombing raid, they were uh, shot up and in trouble and they managed to find their way into bulkhead and land. One of them refueled immediately, turned around and took off, and the other two needed some repairs so they stayed for a couple of days. And as you can see, it's fairly remote out here. These 17s had uh, departed from three different airfields. The first was at Depham Green, RAF Depham Green, this in Norfolk. The second was RAF Alconbury in Cambridgeshire, and the third was uh, RAF Snetterton Heath in Norfolk. Teens landed here on a return mission from Frankfurt, in trouble, low on fuel, injured crew on board and in need of help. I did aim when I got the draft notice, so I went down to Camp Dodge for the physical. Now, I was supposed to go to aircraft mechanic school. I was slated to do that at Amarillo. But they had, uh, the Air Force had a shortage of gunners turret is a complete ball. It's 42 inches in diameter. You got in the ball after you took off, and so you point the gun straight down. That puts the door up inside the airplane. You climb in, and your hands operated the turret. And you're inside the ball, and you have your 250 caliber machine gun, and your oxygen equipment, and around 500 rounds of ammunition the motor and everything else that runs it's in there. So there's not much room. The first five or six missions you're, you're scared and then you start getting tired and you get so tired you don't, you'd be in to think you don't think you're gonna make it. And then the last five, you think, well maybe you are gonna make it and you get more scared again. The railroad yards, aircraft factories, synthetic fuel plants, and those were critical targets. Those were almost generally most heavily defended. My last mission was to Pilsen, Czechoslovakia, Skoda Munition Company. We had the ball turret with two guns. We had the top turret with two guns. And we had, by the time when we had a single 50 caliber gun sticking out, one for the navigator, one for the bombardier. But then, by the time they kept modifying the B-17, so we got down to the 17, B-17G model, which is what I had all the time, and they had added a chin turret with two, two, more, two more machine guns, and the bombardier could operate that, remote control, mm -hmm. and uh, that put a stop to, you see, here so much about 12 o'clock high when they came in at you, straight at you out of the sun. Yeah. That, those two tents put a little stop to that. Yeah. Because now you had four guns pointing at that guy to the two Yeah. Before we only had the guy on top. Uh, the guy ball turret only could never get, if they were at high, he'd never get a shot at them. So then they began coming in at the side and tail, and they knew exactly where our range, the waist gunner and the tail gunner couldn't cover this certain number of degrees. Mm -hmm. So they'd know they'd come in there, mm -hmm. or they'd come in underneath, or the ball turret gunner was the only guy that could get them. Yeah. And, uh, and they had, they had it all planned out. It was it was a strategic war, but the only jets involved were the ones the Germans had, and uh, that thing could go over 500 miles an hour. Could could you talk about the um, the ball turret gunner? They usually picked like really short guys to go on that position. Yeah, he got there. trained. <coughs> that was decided in combat crew training. <coughs> when you went to combat crew training after gunnery school, I you didn't know anybody. You just we went to. I, I went to Lincoln, Nebraska, and they said, well, you're going to be on B-17, which tickled me to death, because they didn't even know what plane I'd be on. Mm -hmm. And so then they said, it's a Sioux City, and I met, they 
just matched us up. All of a sudden, we had six gunners, an engineer, a radio operator, an armor gunner, and then three more gunners. And you, and you had the Allied servicemen, and particularly in this film, the um, the American uh, servicemen who who gave uh, tremendous sacrifice throughout the Second World War and were incredibly brave to um, climb aboard a B-17 Flying Fortress and fly off to uh, fly off to uh, Northern Europe. It's all gone quiet now. This is uh, RAF uh, Grafton Underwood and you'll see it pan back as it was when it was a uh, United States Air Force Base and also pan back into um, how it's now gone back to uh, pastures uh, and green fields and largely everybody uh, as you can appreciate they've all gone home back to the uh, back to america and um, I, I just really want to say thank you very much for watching this far it's been uh, quite a in many ways quite a harrowing experience putting it together but i hope i hope it's been um, interesting this is a uh, crew at RAF bolt head back in March 1944 where our story began when the um, B-17 came into land. You can see it here in the image just on the lower side there are the two B-17s parked beside the uh, main runway and um, here's a, an image of uh, the outline of the runways as they were during the Second World War and uh, over uh, laid onto a Google map of today. Well thank you very much uh, f to everybody I really mean that. Um, I appreciate you coming along and uh, perhaps you'll have a think about subscribing um, and look forward to seeing you uh, on the next, uh, the next film out in about a week's time. Take care and all the very best.